So it's a cold, dreary day, so I'm inside doing inside work. And what I'm going to be making is some graham crackers. I'm going to go through all the steps and the ingredients that I use for this. And I'm also going to grind up some extra flour for some dumplings because I'm making chicken stew for supper and I'll be doing bread later. But this today's video is going to be on making graham crackers. And I've made these graham crackers for chocolate cream pie and just to eat. I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to experiment. I put cinnamon and sugar on top last time, and I'm going to do that with a glaze of butter and cinnamon sugar on there because these graham crackers do have butter in it. So I'm going to experiment with that. But the first thing I'm going to do is grind up the flour. So in my recipe, I use a cup and a half of spelt and a cup and a half of soft wheat. I'm going to do a couple cups because I need some also for the dumplings, so I'm not going to be so um, accurate. Normally when I grind this up, I just have a heaping cup, and that would get me my cup and a half. But I'm going to turn this off when I run the mill because the mill gets quite loud. So I know I'm going to need a cup and a half of the spelt. So I'm just going to measure this out in here. This is just about cup and a half. You can get this level. So now I'm going to work on making sure I've got a cup for the dumplings. And I'm making a mess. And as usual, I put headphones on because this does get loud. This here is going to be a smidge over a cup of smelt for the dumplings. I'll set that aside. Because the next thing I'm going to work on is the soft white wheat and I need the same amount. I need a cup and a half and then I'm going to also do a cup for the dumplings. So we'll get going with this next process. Almost. So now I have my soft white, and this is more than what I'll need, and the spelt for the dumplings. And I always undo this just to help cool it off. I'm going to be using this again for bread flour. But until I do that, I'm just going to turn it off. And I'm going to get going with the rest of the stuff for the graham crackers. Clean up a little bit here first. So for the wet ingredients, my recipe calls for a half a cup of softened butter. And I've got some soft butter here. And it's okay if it doesn't all come out because I'm going to use a smidge of this on the top. So it'll get all incorporated into the cracker, just I'm gonna have this much left over I'm gonna melt for the top. It also calls for three-fourths cup dark brown sugar, in my case I use Sukunak, it's what I prefer, and one teaspoon of vanilla extract. And this is some vanilla extract I made. I believe this stuff's been aged for three years. I do have more and I've gotta make some more. I've got right below this a whole bunch of vodkas and rums to experiment with. So we're going to just mix this up well. And this doesn't get fluffy because the sukunak that I'm using is more chunkier than grinding it up. I suppose you could grind it up finer. So this is going to be my butter sugar mix. And again, this is a half cup butter, three-fourths cup sukunak and one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Now I'm gonna work on my dry ingredients. So for my dry ingredients, I have three cups of mixed freshly ground spelt 
and soft white wheat. And you can use the combinations you like. This is combination I liked. And to that, I'm going to be adding three-fourths teaspoon of salt. I am using a Redmond's salt, sea salt. You could use whatever kind you have. And this is three-fourths teaspoon salt. And to that, I'm going to be adding one teaspoon of baking powder. And out of habit, I've always just put mine in the strainer. Though I find with this, it's so nice and fluffy and not full of hard parts. Put that in there. And then also for cinnamon, a quarter teaspoon of ground cinnamon. And this is Ceylon cinnamon. I'm also gonna be putting some on top. I don't care if I put in a little more, I think I will. And that is the dry ingredients. So three cups flour, three quarter, quarter teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of baking powder, quarter teaspoon of cinnamon. And I'm just kind of whisking this together. And now I'm going to be combining the dry ingredients with the butter along with a half a cup of water. So now I'm just going to add some of my butter mixture. I'm going to mix this in a little bit. It's really kind of dry and grainy and that's okay. And I'm going to add in a little bit of the water. You can add too much and you can't take it back, but you can always add more. And this here isn't the full amount yet. And I don't know if I want this container. I like using my hands. So I think I'm going to use my hands because then I can really feel it. And mix this up and I'm going to add the rest of the butter and the rest of the water and continue mixing this up. Hands are the greatest tools. So I'm going to add in the rest of this. And typically, I don't use separate bowls for dishes. I just do it all in one. But for this purpose, I'm measuring everything as it says. And I've made these before just in one big bowl, and it worked out just fine and the rest of the water. And again, mixing this up. And this dough isn't going to be as sticky as bread flour, and it shouldn't be overly dry. And we're gonna let this rest for 30 minutes to give it time to absorb. all the wet ingredients that we put in. I'm just going to finish mixing this. You don't need to watch. I'm just it. about to where I want to be with mixing this. I did add one more teaspoon of water because I just felt like it needed it. And I'm going to cover this and let this rest for 30 minutes and then we'll come back and knead it a little bit. And this just gives it a chance for all the stuff to absorb in the liquid. And yeah, it's gonna be a little more chunkier. It's a graham cracker. So I'm gonna get this covered and we'll see you in 30 minutes. It has been 30 minutes. I'm gonna lightly flour my work area here. And I can't remember how much I added last time I made it. And I'm just gonna work a half of it at a time. And I wanna work this into a rectangle as much as I can before I actually start rolling it.
this into about an eighth of an inch, three millimeters thick. And I want to keep, I don't like trimming off sides, so I will have the edge sides that are just odd, and that's okay because that's what we eat them first, or sample, sample chunks. I'm going to need a little more flour. And I'm just going to continue rolling this until I get this half rolled out. I originally thought I would have enough for one cookie sheet, but I'm going to put these on two. And I'm changing my mind on how I want to cut these. That one got a little thin there. I'm going to get these put onto the cookie sheet and we'll leak you up after that. So last time I just put a little bit of cinnamon sugar on them, but I'm going to just experiment and very lightly glaze these with a little bit of butter, just a tiny, tiny bit, barely to put enough on top. And I don't, I'm do, just experimenting. Why? Because I can. But w these were so good, just plain, as is. You don't need any of this extra. I had made some for a pie crust and then just put a little cinnamon sugar on some that we we're going to eat and found that the family absolutely loved that. And these ones, like this one here is about the thickness I did the last batch. This one's a little thicker. And I think we preferred it a little bit thicker than the other one. And so then I just sprinkle a little cinnamon sugar on. And I'm doing a little more than I did before, and that's okay. Last time I very lightly did it we try and keep the sugar cut down but this is a treat we only eat very little of these look at that brown finger again it's my told my daughter i'm a gardener i don't have a green thumb i got a brown finger and as a cook i think i should call myself the klutzy cook because i am a story in the kitchen I have knocked over, I don't know, four or five things that's not going to be on this video. So I'm going to finish doing this to both pans and get this in the oven at 350 degrees for about 20 minutes and I'm going to cool it for five minutes and I'll see I'm you I'm just going to mention that while these are in the oven, I'm going to be rolling out the other half and doing the same process. And I'm putting it on parchment paper so that I don't have to grease the pan. But if you don't have parchment paper, just lightly grease the pan. That'll be good. So 350 degrees, 20 minutes. Batch number two. And I just kind of clean up the edges so I don't have too many uneven parts. And that's all I do. I'm just going to roll that out and get these on two more cookie sheets. These squares I made a little bit smaller. I might have got a little heavy-handed with some of the cinnamon sugar because I got lazy about pinching it, so I just shook it on. So the other ones are almost ready to come out of the oven, and then I'll put these ones in. 
Graham crackers are done. They turned out so good. Some of the ones with dark on it is dark from the cinnamon that got a little heavy. This is the texture of the graham cracker. Very, very delicious, very crunchy. They do um, come out really super crunchy and then the next day they're not quite as crunchy. They're just perfectly delicious and really, really good and it took less than an hour to make. Fresh bread out of the oven. I no longer score the tops of the fresh milled flour. Bread, I find that it does not need it. Next are dumplings and chicken stew. For supper, I'm gonna make some chicken stew with dumplings and it's so easy to make. And I'm just going to make a basic roux with equal parts of butter and some fresh milled flour that I had milled earlier. And all I want to do is I want to cook it to get that floury taste out. And I think I could add a little more flour. And to this, I'm going to add a little bouquet garni. I'm going to add a little bit of pepper, because we like pepper. We can never get enough pepper. Maybe not that much what I have in my hand. And a little pinch of salt. And I'm just going to cook this down to get rid of some of that fresh flour. So I have some leftover chicken broth in the fridge. So I'm going to use some of that. And this is with using some of the canned chicken that I made last fall. And it's got carrots, potatoes, celery, chicken, onion, and some seasoning in there. And it's quick and easy. I'm going to continue heating this up because I know my iPad's getting low on battery. I'm also going to add a little bit of parsley for color. It's kind of early. You'd normally do this at the end, but I've got it out now. And it's not as flavorful as fresh parsley, but it'll add some color. Now that I have this up to a simmer, I'm going to add my stew. I would normally make this thicker, but because I am adding the dumpling, mm, that smells so good. There's a lot of flour in the dumpling and it will thicken it up and it will absorb the juice that is in here. So I really don't need to thicken it up too much. And you can use whatever liquid or broth you have. I had some open chicken broth in the fridge. I also have freezer, home canned chicken broth, but I had that opened in the fridge, so that is what I'm gonna use. I'm gonna heat this up, and I'm gonna get on to making the dumplings. For the dumplings, I'm going to use one cup of spelt and one cup of soft white wheat. I think this one's actually the soft white wheat. One cup of spelt. And I'm also gonna put in a tablespoon of the red, hard red. Uh, maybe I'm gonna put in two. To my dry ingredients, I'm going to add one teaspoon of sugar, one teaspoon of salt, and a half teaspoon of baking soda. And I always put the baking soda and baking powder in my little strainer to make sure I get out any of the lumps.
and that is the drug ingredients. I'm just gonna kind of stir and whisk these together a little bit. And to this, I'm gonna be adding my wet ingredients. I've got four tablespoons of melted butter, I have three-fourths cup of buttermilk, and I use this. I'm trying to beat the thunderstorm. We're having our first thunderstorm. And I'm going to add one egg. I'm just going to stir this. I had to stop because I had to stir my chicken stew. And this will look about right. And I like to let this sit a little bit. Normally I make this first and let this sit while I heat up the stew. And I kind of forgot that I do that. So I'm just going to let this sit a minute. So everything gets absorbed into one another. Boy, is it getting dark. Another thing I like to do is wrap the lid. And the reason why I do this is so that condensation does not drip off into the dumplings, making them soggy and heavier than they should be. And this is just something I've always done. I don't remember where I learned it from. Just always done this. And I'm going to put in a few clips. And now my cap is ready to go on to the simmering pot. Turn on all my lights because it got dark. To this, I'm going to add 24 dumplings. And I'm just doing like a teaspoon full and dropping it in and I'm kind of going as fast as I can this will bring the temperature down just a smidge so hopefully it won't um, quit simmering on me so I'm going to continue this for 20 make these dumplings and put them on any stew a beef stew anything. So I've got all my dumplings on. I'm going to put my lid on and set the timer for 15 minutes. It's been 15 minutes and you can see the dumplings absorbed a lot of the liquid and they are done. Ooh, hot. And they are very light and fluffy. I'm going to let this cool down and dish some up. See the broth was really soaked up. But these are so good. This is my husband's. And I wish I could show you really how light and fluffy these are. And they're very good. The broth is very thick. The juice gets soaked up by the dumplings. And you could do this on any dish. It's just, it is so good.